Today, uh, starting for a couple of days in Abu Dhabi, is the International Islamic Finance Forum, which is a gathering of industry leaders and practitioners in Islamic finance. And in our studios to explain why is Suhail Zuberi, the CEO of Dar al Sharia Legal and Financial Consultancy, subsidiary of uh, Dubai Islamic Bank. Good morning and uh, welcome. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum as Good morning. Um, why is this particular meeting of Islamic finance specialists being held? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is part of a um, uh, process, you know, where um, on an ongoing basis these conferences are held to collect the experts and the Sharia scholars and then to give them an opportunity and a platform to interact and to learn about uh, what is latest in Islamic finance. It's not the first time, in fact, um, this forum is being held for the last, I think, uh, five years. Every six months they hold this and they change the venue. Um, it really gives a lot of opportunity for people to network and to understand as to which uh, Islamic financial institutions has come up with what products and they explain it to the audience and then there is uh, some kind of question and answer session and then Sharia scholars panels are held so that, you know, they let people know what is the latest on the Sharia front when it comes to financing. So this is an ongoing, this is not the only conference. There are other uh, conference organizers who do it on an ongoing basis. Well, a YouGov uh, Suraj survey last week found that 54% of consumers were uncertain over the differences between Islamic and conventional banking services. Firstly, did that shock you or even surprise you? No, it did not, because... Uh, uh, I used to write a column in a local uh, newspaper for about four years on uh, making people understand what is the Islamic finance. And really because I came from the other side, I was a conventional banker for almost quarter century. And then I switched sides. And when I went to Islamic finance, I could see the difference. So that's why I tried to explain it to people. And a lot of people did appreciate that. The people who are working in conventional banks have got um, very little information about uh, what Islamic finance, how the Islamic financing products are different than the conventional banks. Um, and once you explain it to them, then they do really appreciate. Mainly the appreci appreciation comes from the uh, consumers, the uh, customers of conventional banks, when they come to know that uh, in Islamic finance, it's ethical finance, and then they are treated uh, fairly, and uh, they're not hidden charges, and also there is no penalties, and they basically have a straightforward amortization or whatever finance they take. So there's a lot of appreciation uh, on the part of the consumers, actually. And um, I think there is a need to uh, explain it to the masses as to how the Islamic financing products are different than the conventional ones. Why haven't banks been doing that, though? I mean, why have they not been differentiating themselves? I would have thought that was a main selling point. There are different um, um, channels to do that. Uh, one is perhaps this channel, which is... Uh, basically uh, pretty um, effective and perhaps you know if something could be done on a regular basis uh, on, on, on this channel perhaps it could help a lot of people to understand Islamic banks on their own have um, tried to educate their customers from time to time uh, they do have some kind of sessions and all especially Dubai Islamic Bank we have got uh, a program whereby all the counter staff and the customer service staff is trained and uh, they are told you see uh, the main issue here is that we don't have an institution to teach people what is Islamic finance so when Islamic banks need any human resources they always tend to the um, conventional banks because conventional bankers do tend to know how to deal with money. So this is their strength, strong point. So basically the Islamic uh, financing people are coming from the conventional finance. But when they enter, there is need on the part of the Islamic banks to educate them. And for that, the way Islamic Bank and Darush Sharia have launched a program whereby we are teaching our counter staff and the customer service staff and the others how to 
differentiate between the products uh, the Islamic bank offers vis-a-vis the conventional banks. Is part of this problem not because is- Islamic banks have tried to um, look as main street, as high street as possible to offer all of the products um, that, that conventional banks do to, to say that they're not more expensive than conventional banks, to, to look as modern as possible? Uh, the uh, product range is very important for any commercial entity dealing in finance. And for that, normally we are approached by different customers and they are, uh, they, they ask us, well, if this product is available conventionally, why it is not available Islamically? Because if they would like to make a switch, then they would like to have a product which is available, which will fulfill their requirements, uh, which is being uh, provided by the conventional banks. Now, uh, Dar Sharia, uh, uh, very closely working with the Sharia Board of the Islamic Bank, have come up with 41 different products in the last uh, five years. And these products actually are almost um, an alternate to the conventional banks. In fact, they have a, uh, the sort of a better alternate than the conventional banks because, as I mentioned, there is no compounding element in Islamic banking, there is no penalty element in Islamic banking, and there is a fair... Uh, Treatment. Uh, we are talking about the product range. If the uh, customers are given, for example, the currency swaps or the rate swaps um, by the Islamic banks, which are not available earlier, now they are available. Uh, we have worked on it and we have given it to the industry. Uh, so the conventional banking customers are now switching over to Islamic banks because they know that they have these sophisticated products done Islamically. The, the International Islamic Finance Forum, which starts the day that we talked about at the start, um, is going to debate the results of this survey. And the press relief that we received to prepare ourselves for your visit this morning has one of the strangest statements I've ever read in a, in a press release. And it says, the survey has also been conducted with an aim to answer an important question. Would the average customer prefer a bank that promises moral salvation or one which offers friendly, convenient service, value for money, and an envy-inducing credit card. Explain what you understand by that question. Uh, are you, is it, I mean, are they suggesting in this that Islamic banking will give moral salvation? Islamic banks uh, definitely are um, governed by the uh, uh, ethics and the rules of Sharia, and uh, there is a corporate governance layer in addition to a conventional bank because in Islamic bank we have a Sharia board, which is not there in the conventional bank. So Sharia board basically oversee all the um, um, uh, products, how they are being applied and implemented. And if there are any um, issues, they, they try to uh, you know resolve them and eliminate them. In such short time, it won't be possible for me to explain to you the good side of the Islamic finance, but maybe perhaps in future I can explain to you. But for sure, people who have switched over, they have been better off. For example, in case of uh, financial crisis when it hit Dubai Shores, a lot of people who are dealing with Islamic banks, the corporates and the individuals, were better off compared to the conventional banks because in case of uh, um, their inability to pay, they were restructured without any additional uh, hidden cost and all. So they were definitely better off. Uh, in case of leasing, in case of murabaha, which is a uh, sale of car, for example, on a fixed price, if, if you delay, obviously the Islamic bank cannot charge anything extra. So people did get benefit out of the uh, moral side of the Islamic banking products. In uh, many Western eyes, Islamic finance hasn't captured the market share that it promised to five years ago. How would the Islamic finance community itself answer that question? How well does it see that it's, uh, that it's done? You see, Could uh, it have Islam- done better? Uh, Islamic finance, um, um, you know, the Sharia scholars, for example, they have done a great job. Sharia scholars have come up uh, with standards. They started off with the Sharia standards in 2003, and now they have gone to build it up to this level. In fact, they have now added about 43 standards. In addition to that, we have got the Islamic Fiqh Academy, and we have got uh, the uh, IOFI standards and the IFSB in Malaysia. Now, all these things are available for the Western world to pick and to be guided. And if the Western world uh, facing problems in Islamic, uh, in, in conventional finance, they can look at these and they can say, well, this is the right way of doing, of handling money. It is up to the Western world to 
approach the Sharia scholars, to approach the Sharia standards and to have a look whether is this a better alternate available uh, currently uh, and then for sure they will find that there are morals and ethics in Islamic finance and the standards and the rules and regulations which are there. Well I hope that the Islamic Finance Forum goes uh, well for you. Uh, thank you for coming into our studio. Suhail thank Zaberi, you. the Chief Executive Officer of Dar al-Sharia. Al thank you very much. Thank you very much.